On this week's Steely Podcast, we explore office hours. I feel like the first thing that's most important to recognize about office hours, it's, a, it's an opportunity for you to get to know your professor, to get to know their passions, their interests, and to better understand why they're teaching that course. I'm not, I'm not anti-office hours. I just personally have, have not run into a situation where I've felt the desire to go. Because to me, if uh, I'm putting a lot of effort into a class and uh, I still don't really get it, it's like you were saying with your professor, I think, uh, where like going in and they're going to be like, well, I taught you it this way. They're just going to teach you it the same way again. Uh, but I know for me, office hours is often a way that I can kind of advocate for myself in a way that I wouldn't be able to in the classroom. And I say this because there have been classes that I've been in where, you know, I, I approach the professor respectfully, we're talking about an assignment or something, and then maybe I bring up, hey, uh, the reading workload or the, the articles we're supposed to read, there's, it's kind of a lot. And, you know, some of these are very dense and I'm really struggling to get them all done before class. and. You know, I think some other students are too. I've had professors who then go into the class and say, hey, so at office hours I was hearing that, you know, maybe the workload's a little too much. How are you guys feeling? Should we adjust things? I would say I do not take well to threats. Um, <laughs> I don't think it is okay for professors to be threatening students' grades by saying, have to talk to me. You have to do this thing even if you're doing great in the class and you already have an A and you don't really want to take this class. You're just doing it for a requirement. You have to do it or else I'm blowing your grades like now. I would I would take that L. I would be like, I'm not talking to this crazy person. Why is this well, I think some faculty members, uh, some of the newer faculty members in particular, really have uh, very um, uh, intense office hours where they're really uh, requiring students to come in and talk about uh, their papers and such. But I think in some ways having a more informal kind of setting uh, is also important, uh, where a student can just come in and talk, uh, mm -hmm. where it's not really structured around the, the assignment that's due in a couple of weeks, but just a chance to get to know uh, each other a little bit better. This is Sam Vita, and on this week's Engage With Us series, we are taking a look at office hours, the time a professor sets to meet with students one-to-one. -one. We begin with a group discussion on how we as students get our professor's attention. Okay, here is your prompt. You live in a world with zero gravity. How are you reaching your professor? Go! Echo location. I, I can't be <laughs> What? <laughs> yeah, I'm part dolphin. Echo location sounds good. <laughs> In a world without gravity, where folks have to use jetpacks to get around, and Cheetos are forbidden. Oh, what the heck? How are you reaching your professor? That's so wrong. <laughs> reaching them in what sense? Contacting them? I'll just send them an email. Like, I was <laughs> <laughs> I guess you could like yeah. fly around their house. Orbit them. Until they come out. Orbit yeah. them. Orbit them. So or orbit their, their office. Like they'll create gravity and they'll be like drawn to you because of oh, the orbiting. Or you get drawn. I to would them. I would just collect a bunch of little pebbles and then make mini asteroids to fling at them. Ah. <laughs> or you just bounce around the hallway until they come out of their office out of office hours. You're, it's like a little bounce house, but it's just like Boswell Hall. <laughs> you know the <laughs> treadmills they have on like the space station? I would like I would wait till they're exercising on that because, you know, if there's no gravity, you've got to exercise a lot. And so I would wait till they're on that, and then I would get on the treadmill next to them, and then they'd be stuck for, like, whatever, 30 minutes, you know. And I could bug them about my grades. I feel like 99% of the time you do have to make the first move with a professor to even, like, meet with them, oh, to have yeah, a conversation. To, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, all the time. <laughs> But no, I, I, I do feel like it is definitely the students that make the first step. Um, does anyone have any other experiences with that, or is it always student first? Yeah, I feel like in this case, email is not enough, because emails get um, lost in the inbox. Professors get so many emails a day, and a lot of times, even if you email them like on a daily basis, they still might not know your face or who you look like. So I think I try to make like an unconscious effort to like sit in the front of every mm -hmm. class, not because I want to be noticed, but because I am like partially blind and deaf. And if I don't sit in the front, I won't be able to get the information. 
But yeah, I think it's a little tough for professors to like try to connect with everyone and make sure everyone feels seen in the class. Yeah, I feel like it really depends on like class size. Um, if it's a big class, that professor <laughs> isn't gonna know you, um, especially in a big room where you can sit like anywhere. And, uh, but in like the small classes though, I feel like it is easier to kind of have that connection with the professor without having to make that move because like, let's just say it's only like eight of us in the class where like it's more intimate. So I feel like you kind of already are building a bond with that professor already. And then like, you know, you're speaking in class, uh, you might say something when class is over. So like it's easier to build that connection, but in the big classes, yeah, you gotta like emails, but even then they ignore your emails cause I get ignored all the time. So. I don't know, like I haven't really found that good like thing to do to really get their attention if they don't respond to emails. I don't know, what is, is anybody else doing anything? Or? I I just go up to them after okay. class. And if they're like, I have to leave, I'm like, I have to talk. <laughs> <laughs> this is important. And normally, normally that's all it takes. You know, you said that normally the student makes the first move, you know, but like how are the professors supposed to know you want to meet? You know, the student has to make the first move or they won't, they won't get a meeting or they won't get a discussion, you know. I feel like I bring up this class a lot, but there is a chem class that I took my freshman year that, like, I was going into office hours, like, multiple times a week. And it was a big class, but I felt like because I was going multiple times a week, like, the professor would, like, you know, see me, like, recognize me, like, recognize the effort that I was, like, putting in. But, like, every time I went in, he was just kind of, like, who is that? unhelpful I would go in like every week and I'd be like I'm I really don't understand this concept and he would be like well I don't know how you don't understand this because blah 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 and I was like well I also don't understand that so can you explain that to me and he like would be like well you should have read this blah 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 and I'm like well I did read it and it still didn't make sense mm. so it was just very discouraging and I felt like I was like not seen at all he was kind of like like, I was already coming into office hours, and he was like, well, you can get a tutor, but I don't have any other, like, resources for you, which was, like, very unhelpful. Are there any courses or classes that you've taken? Because I, I, I hear, I'm, I'm hearing there are some negative experiences. Are there any things that you've had a professor do that has been maybe very helpful or, like, something that has made you feel seen and heard in your yeah, time Mary? Actually, in my Orgo, two, my Orgo 1 class, Dr. Shearer, he, it was like a hundred person class, but like, of course, not everyone showed up to all the classes because like it was COVID and like he recorded the lectures. So like it would just be a handful of people in the big ISC lecture hall just, and he'd just be like staring at us <laughs> teaching the lecture. And I would show up to class because I knew if I didn't show up, I wouldn't look at the lectures on Blackboard, but I, show, I would show up to class and I guess somehow, some way, like he noticed my dedication he emailed me at one point in the semester and like told me how he was like impressed with me and how I like ended up raising my score because I got like a really low quiz score and then like the next quiz I did really well and he just like commended me on that with an email and I was I was a little surprised I was like wow all these people are in this class and you're reaching out to me that was really sweet so see Ryan's emails came through <laughs> yeah y'all were hating on the emails I until it boosted your egos you know <laughs> Y'all were hating on the emails till you got complimented. See, they're powerful. Never underestimate it. Any other like positive experiences or things that just stand out where you're like, oh, that like really like meant a lot to me that this professor did that. Um, yeah, for me, um, out of all my classes, it's only been one professor that I actually felt like had like a positive relationship with me, which it is sad, but. Um, it started out negative though, like it took me going into that professor's office crying oh. for them to like actually want to build like a relationship and try to help me out. So it's like I had to start off in a negative way in order for it to become positive. But like while doing that and being in their office, they were just like communicating with me how they feel like all the professors need to work on some sort of way to connect with their um, students and that they feel like there is definitely like a disconnect between the students and the professors. So, I mean, it, it worked out, but it sucks that I did have to go into the office crying, like, I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> I'm gonna fail, in order for that to even lead to a relationship. I feel like that's a really good point, though. Like, vulnerability doesn't always have to be negative. I feel like professors 
some professors don't always realize that you don't always have to be a hard ass. Like you can be nice to students and they will still do work. Like we appreciate you being understanding and vulnerable with us. Like, especially now, like if a teacher has like a sick parent or a sick child and wants to stay home, like nobody's gonna be mad at you if you have to cancel class. Like trust me, nobody's gonna be mad at you. I feel like there can definitely be some transparency gained from vulnerability. Welcome, Welcome to the to Steely, Steely Podcast, Podcast. Yeah. Office, Office Hours. hours. One of my professors, one of my gov professors, who's also my major advisor, he would set like check mark due dates uh, along the syllabus for like big papers. So like in each section, so say you have an annotated bibliography due, like you're gathering your sources. He wanted you to like come into office hours and talk with him about like how you're finding your research, how you're going about it, is anything going difficult. Um, and then I would just end up staying and we would just end up talking because he just wanted to get to know all of the students in this class, which I thought was really cool. Question, do you think it matters more that a professor like sets requirements like yours did to like, hey, you have to come see me, you have to step into office hours. I've had professors that have done that where it's like, you have to stop into office hours at least once a semester, your grade lowers. Or is it more helpful to have a professor say, hey, I'm not requiring you to, but my door is always open. These are when I'm you know, here, I'll set up like opportunities for you to connect with me. Like, would you rather have the option to and you can choose or would you rather it be a requirement? I would say I do not take well to threats. Um, <laughs> I don't think it is okay for professors to be threatening students' grades by saying, you have to talk to me. You have to do this thing, even if you're doing great in the class and you already have an A and you don't really want to take this class, you're just doing it for a requirement, but you have to do it or else I'm lowering your grade. Like, no, I would, I would take that L. I would be like, I'm not talking to this crazy person. Why is this? No. Yeah. I'd rather just be like low key, laid back, the door is open, please come talk to me because I'm actually interested in like having a conversation. One of my professors put in the syllabus this semester that you have to visit office hours by the 25th of October and I'm just going to wait until the 24th <laughs> because I really don't want to. <laughs> oh my god. Um, I like that it's optional, like when they say you can come in whenever, but I just wish more professors would communicate that in the beginning of the sem like, semester, whenever you start the class, that like they want to support you. I feel like a lot of times professors don't put emphasis on the fact that they want to help you. They want to get to know you. They want a relationship. So if they were to emphasize that and actually communicate that, it would, like, I feel like encourage more people to come to office hours if it's optional. Yeah. I, I was just thinking I've, I've never, I've never been to office hours. I've never gone. And I, you know, even when I'm struggling, sometimes I'm just like, I, I don't know if, because to me, if uh, I'm putting a lot of effort into a class and uh, I still don't really get it, it's like you were saying with your professor, I think, uh, where like going in and they're going to be like, well, I taught you it this way. They're just going to teach you it the same way again, you know? What, if you're already struggling with that style of teaching, how is office hours going to help you like you're just going to get the same information again probably presented in a very similar way because mm -hmm. it's the same professor so that's why i've never been and you know i maybe maybe it i'm wrong in that or maybe that's controversial but i i generally don't go well i think that's a good point like that's why i go to tutoring most of the time instead of like going to office hours because like for my professors at least like sometimes their doors are just like flooded with students in the first place and like it's hard to like get through and like they do just like regurgitate the same information and be like does it make more sense now and I'm like no you just repeated yourself. I had a really bad office hour experience freshman year <laughs> that really threw me off for a while it was uh, an econ class I was struggling in and I went to uh, talk to the professor and I got told to study harder and to leave <laughs> and I was like uh, I'm sorry so I'm not coming back <laughs> you walked into the office you asked your question and he said okay you just need to study harder please get out mm -hmm. yeah that was basically the spark notes of that oh, my God. I didn't do well on an exam and I went in and I was like hey like what do you, is there anything you think I should be like doing like anything I should be looking over more like what concepts do you think 
are more important for me to look at than I seem to get got wrong. He gets he looks at my scan trying to go study harder. I'm like, okay, mm. nice. Mm, <laughs> what would incentivize you, Ryan? I'm just curious. Like, is there anything a professor could say or do that would like get you into office hours, or is there just need does there need to be another solution? I mean, well, I I I this solution for me has been to study hard study hard I mean, I mean i'm not trying to be flippant but i don't feel like there's any you know like oh we want every student going into office hours if they can get by without going to office hours what you know what difference does it make you know when i like got to college i think i realized that like building relationships and networking will like always and forever be more important than a grade like mm -hmm. literally I don't believe anyone's gonna be looking at my transcript trying to make sure whether or not I got a B or a C in this one particular class I think it's gonna be like whether or not I built a relationship with this person and this person can, can vouch for me so I think that's where office hours can come in handy as well mm -hmm. does that change your mind at all Ryan about office hours or no <laughs> I, I mean I'm not I'm not anti office hours <laughs> I just personally have have not run into a situation where I've felt the desire to go. Uh, it really just depends on the professor. Like mm -hmm. a lot of my professors, I they just don't give that inviting like you're even going to build a relationship if you even were to go to their office hours. Like like I said, like I'm a senior now and I've only had one professor that I actually have a relationship with who can vouch for me or give me a recommendation if I need something. And so I've gone through a lot of professors and they were not inviting nice kind they didn't care for a relationship at all mm -hmm. so it really just depends on your professor too what was your major or what is your major do you mind me asking yeah uh i started out as chemistry and now i'm kinesiology smart choice yeah <laughs> but like what if like in order to like build relationships with professors like you're getting rid of office hours and you have to think of another way that you can connect with your professor outside of the classroom i would say like a meal Maybe not drinks, because I don't know if I want to, like, let loose around my professor <laughs> like that. But, like, a nice meal, I think, would be a cool way to get to know a person. Yeah, I feel like going to get lunch with them, maybe dinner would be nice. You can talk and conversate about stuff outside of school as well and actually get to know them. I've gotten so. coffee with a couple of them. That's always a pretty relaxing way to do it. You know, uh, I can't remember what school this is, but there are schools that they'll have, like, as part of the meal plan you get. 20 or 50 dollars a semester to take your professor out to a lunch. I, I can't remember which school this is, but there is a school that does that. That's actually pretty interesting. Like, you know, maybe, you know, you're on the meal plan, you can take your professor somewhere once a semester. I think that's a good way to incentivize the professors to make, to like, mm -hmm. be more helpful to their students so that they like them more. So that they'll take them out to lunch. Yeah, the Sadler. Yeah. No. No, well, <laughs> I think it should be, you know, 50 real dollars, you know, if you want to go to the cheese shop, buy a couple of sandwiches, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. even, I wonder if you could, like, get it so the professor had a little bit of a stipend, because I had a professor, and he would pay out of his own pocket. Once a month, he would buy boxes of duck donuts. Not just like Krispy Kreme, like no, like the custom duck mm -hmm. donuts. Was that Professor Hart? Yes. Yeah, he yes. did that. He did that and a couple buys, weeks ago. Yeah. Um, he buys like juices. I told him I was vegan, so he made sure that I had Oreos, and he would like have it as like a little breakfast for class. Professor John McGlennon is a professor of government and public policy at William Mary. He is also my advisor. Here's my talk with Professor McGlennon about how he conducts his office hours. Welcome back to the Sealy Podcast. My name is Sam Vito. Today we're talking about office hours, and we have a special guest, Professor McGlennon. Professor McGlennon, please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm John McGlennon. I'm a professor of government here at the college, and uh, Sam is one of my advisees. <laughs> I've had, had a good opportunity to talk with him in office hours a number of times. So, uh, as you know, today's episode is about office hours more generally. Um, have you seen them change in importance as you've been at the college, or have they but always been a mainstay of the academics here? Yeah, I think that one of the things about William & Mary is that this is a place where we've always had the opportunity for undergraduate students and faculty to really get to know each other. Uh, faculty here tend to spend a fair amount of time in their offices, and uh, the opportunity to sit down with a student and learn a little bit more about them 
clarify expectations for courses and maybe think about some uh, long-term uh, interests that the student might have uh, are really important. More specifically, how have you seen office hours uh, impact students? Do you think they're a, a useful resource? Do you enjoy the office hours? Well, I do really enjoy the office hours because it gives you a chance to sit down and really learn a little bit more about what's motivating the student, what kind of background they're coming from, and uh, gives a student an opportunity to do any number of things, such as clarifying the expectations for a course, uh, figuring out uh, how they can come up with a good topic for a paper, or how to prepare themselves for the midterm exams. Uh, office hours are seriously underutilized, I think. Uh, there are a lot of students who um, utilize them uh, frequently to come in and talk about uh, uh, where they um, might have uh, some questions about uh, the assignments that are coming up or just want to talk about their career objectives or just you know have a chance to t chat a little bit and I think uh, from all those perspectives it's a really good thing to uh, have available for students. Uh, I mean especially with you I mean your office hours have always been very open I've always enjoyed going to them I mean I remember freshman year being in your call 150 and going in for clarification on things about the papers that we were mm -hmm. doing, um, sometimes about the readings. Um, and I really appreciate a lot of your feedback you gave me on the papers and generally the course. Well, I think that, you know, that, that's an important part of office hours, really talking about the courses. And uh, it's not only uh, the idea that you're in there to get clarification, but also it's, it's showing on the student's part some interest in the course a sense in which you're really engaged in the topic, and that, I think, makes an impression on faculty members. Yeah, and I, I honestly, I was a little unsure about them at first, but uh, I think I had a great experience with you, especially, and I think that's why you're my advisor now. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, yeah. I think they have been very formative for me, um, and lot, even on this podcast, I remember Ryan saying in the group discussion that he doesn't, he's never went to office hours. He doesn't understand why they're important. For people like that uh, who have never utilized them, what advice would you give them about why they might be more important than they think? Well, I think once you move past the question of, you know, the individual course you're taking, they're usually an opportunity to get to know you a little bit better uh, for the faculty member and for the student to understand where the faculty member is coming from. Maybe to hear about some experiences or to talk about uh, career objectives that you might have. And when you've done that, uh, there's often an opportunity to then say, well, have you thought about this uh, program that's out there? Or, you know, what do you think you're going to be doing when you, uh, usually, when you, when you go on summer break uh, this year? Um, just a chance to maybe think about uh, what other students might have done and to tell the student about that opportunity uh, to, to just um, uh, get a clearer sense of what the student's all about. It helps not only in terms of sometimes identifying possible um, ways in which you can pursue your objectives, but also, you know, if, if you wind up writing a letter for that student, uh, it can make it a much more personal kind of experience, mm -hmm. something that really will resonate with somebody who's reading that letter. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Um, and is there any advice you would give to uh, new or newer faculty members who may not have a great office hour system set up yet? Um, is it more about just being open with no expectations of what's going to uh, transpire in the conversations, or is it more um, having a clear objective for conversations? Well, I think some faculty members, uh, some of the newer faculty members in particular, really have uh, very um, uh, intense office hours where they're really uh, requiring students to come in and talk about uh, their papers and such. But I think in some ways having a more informal kind of setting uh, is also important, uh, where a student can just come in and talk, uh, mm -hmm. where it's not really structured around the, the assignment that's due in a couple of weeks, but just a chance to get to know uh, each other a little bit better. and. Uh, that's the one thing I would say that uh, faculty members ought to be doing. You know, when I first came here, uh, I would say most faculty, almost all the faculty, lived in Williamsburg, and there are not a lot of distractions here for, mm -hmm. for somebody professionally. Um, so most people worked in their offices most days. Uh, now people are pulled in lots of different directions. We have an increasing number of faculty who uh, are living in Richmond or Norfolk or even Washington. 
and uh, that makes it that means that they are kind of uh, setting up their office hours uh, in a way that uh, may make it a little bit more challenging for students to find that right time but it's really worth it and mm -hmm. in, especially if you're in a smaller class uh, where you are already sort of um, known to the faculty member more more personally uh, it can really enrich that experience and I just had a question because you mentioned like requirements requiring to mm -hmm. go to office hours. I there's there's only been one course that I've ever been required to go to office hours in, and I'm taking it this semester. <laughs> in fact, <laughs> um, so senior year. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but I, I I wanted to get your opinion on requiring office hour visits. I think it makes it a little more. Uh, kind of make, making an obligation to go uh, to office hours right. is more of, it, it just rubs me kind of the wrong way in general. Right, <laughs> right. I understand that. And I, I think that uh, the way the faculty member is probably thinking about that is I want to make sure these students have a good idea of what they're supposed to be doing for uh, this assignment that's coming up. Mm -hmm. And so it may make sense from that perspective. It means that you don't have to spend that time in class talking about it so much and you can um, tailor your discussion to the particular topic that the student is working on. Um, but, you know, then you lose the informality of the office hour, the opportunity to kind of delve a little bit more deeply into what a student's uh, background is, where they're um, coming from, and, and uh, just to get a better sense of who those people are that are sitting in front of you uh, three times or two times a week. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I think we had a very fruit <laughs> fruitful discussion, and I just wanted to thank you again for always inviting me into your office and having great talks. Well, Sam, it's been a great pleasure <laughs> to have you come in because I think, uh, you know, we've had uh, the opportunity to find out a lot about what your interests are, what your uh, background is, and, and uh, that really makes me have a, a deeper connection with students that I've had in class. Welcome, Welcome to, the to the Steely, Steely Podcast. Podcast. Office, office Hours. hours. So Sam, let me ask you, you know, office hours are something that you've had the opportunity to take advantage of over the years. What do you learn from office hours? Well, I really enjoy learning more about the professor generally, um, knowing where you come from and your experiences, um, what you are interested in, and it really kind of relates to the courses that you teach. Um, I think it's very interesting to find that out, and I think it really makes me more comfortable in class too. Like, I understand why you're doing X, Y, and Z, and I understand why the assignments are such, um, and it makes it less of like work to do the assignments, more of, oh, like I wanna kind of pique his interest a little bit. You know, remember when I wrote the uh, Larry Hogan possible campaign? Yes, I did. Yeah. Um, and I, that was something that I thought you would find interesting mm. because you also ran for Congress, and it's something that I, I found interesting too, and there was a commonality that I played upon. <laughs> well, I, that's that's a great uh, answer. Um, it really is a, an important opportunity to uh, figure out, uh, you know, well, what is the uh, perspective that this person is coming into class with? And so I'm glad to hear that. All right. Well, I think we had a very fruit, <laughs> fruitful discussion, and I just wanted to thank you again for always inviting me into your office and having great talks. Well, Sam, it's been a great pleasure <laughs> to have you come in because I think, uh, you know, we've had uh, the opportunity to find out a lot about what your interests are, what your uh, background is, and, and uh, that really makes me have a, a deeper connection with students that I've had in class. I agree. Thank you. <laughs> and now it's time for positive key learnings about office hours with Grace Helmick and Sam Vito. To conclude our podcast, STLI's own Grace Helmick and I review our key learnings from this episode in the most positive light. Coming at you live from Positivity Planet, you've got Grace Helmick and Sam Vito. And today, <laughs> we're going to be telling you some ways that you can positively impact your students through positive office hour experiences. Dude, oh. That was really, that, dude, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Lots of energy coming <laughs> off right now. <laughs> I was trying to stay positive, Sam. Yeah, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the first thing that's most important to recognize about office hours, it's, a, it's an opportunity for you to get to know your professor, to mm -hmm. get to know their passions, their interests, and to better understand why they're teaching that course. 
And I think that translates into a better relationship with your professor. Maybe you understand why some assignments are the way they are and why the course load is the way it is. And I think getting to know your professors is a big part of it. And I actually really enjoy going to office hours, unlike Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would agree. And I think it, it does sound like that across departments, there's certain departments that maybe cater better mm-hmm. uh, to getting to know students and forming those relationships. Uh, but I know for me, office hours is often a way that I can kind of advocate for myself in a way that I wouldn't be able to in the classroom. Um, and I say this because there have been classes that I've been in where, you know, I, I approach the professor respectfully, we're talking about an assignment or something, and then maybe I bring up, hey, uh, the reading workload or the, the articles we're supposed to read, there's, it's kind of a lot. And, you know, some of these are very dense, and I'm really struggling to get them all done before class. And, you know, I think some other students are too. And, you know, I guess maybe I've just been lucky, but I've had professors who then go into the class and say, hey, so at office hours, I was hearing that, you know, maybe the workload's a little too much. How are you guys feeling? Should we adjust things? And that would have never happened if, mm-hmm. you know, I hadn't just, you know, been been open and been vulnerable and just kind of honest with my professor. I think you brought up a good point that office hours are a place where you can hone in your skills of self-advocacy. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, how would anyone know what's going on with you if you can't speak for yourself? Exactly. And, you know, I think it's also nice because not only are you kind of creating this space where you can advocate for yourself and work on those skills, but it's also a collaborative space. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you Whereas in a classroom, it can be very easy to have a power dynamic of student, professor, professor lecturing to the students. When you walk into office hours, it's a more level playing field. You know, you mm-hmm. you are exchanging information. You are working together with this professor in a way that maybe you couldn't work together in a large classroom setting. Yeah, it's much more honest. <laughs> yes, and I yeah, and I think honestly that kind of thank you for saying that. That reminds me of what I was wanting to say. Um, I think there can be a tendency when we're in office hours to put on a, like, facade that we understand it better than we have or that we're working harder than we are because there's, like, this element of, like, I want to impress you. I want you to think highly of me. But my best, like, office hour experiences and the best relationships I've built with professors has been through just being really honest. Absolutely. And being willing to admit, hey, I'm not doing all the readings, and it's not because I don't want to, it's just because I have a lot of other work and I can't get to it. Or, you know, I really appreciate this project that you've assigned, but I'm really, it's not it's not connecting. Right. Um, and I think that's something that maybe could be advice to students when we're going into office hours is to, really err on the side of just being brutally honest with like where you're at and how you're doing. I think some of the best advice I've gotten in office hours have come from me being like, hey, I'm kind of struggling with this assignment, this project, this paper. I need some direction because the things just aren't making sense. And I think that's important because how else, like we were talking earlier, how else would they know? They wouldn't because in class, you're not going to stand up and be like, oh yeah, I don't get this or like blah, blah, blah or I'm not doing well in the assignments, or I'm not catching up on the reading. Like in, in class, you always want to just kind of make sure that you seem like you're there with everyone, and it's just kind of intimidating to like admit that you're not. Yeah, no, I think it really is, and I think that then kind of comes to term for faculty members. I think being fluid and being open is very important. Having flexibility and you know prioritizing the learning of the students over the content of the course. Mm-hmm. Um, And sometimes that might mean that you don't get to all the content in the course. You know, if the class as a whole seems to really be stuck on a point, then maybe you kind of take out a couple readings or consolidate the syllabus so that, you know, you're able to spend more time here. And I've I've had professors do that. And, you know, it, it makes for a better learning experience. And like I said, nine times out of 10, the changes that pretty much everyone in the class needs comes from a student or two students going to a professor during office hours, reaching out and advocating for themselves and their peers. And Mm so, you know, if we didn't have people going into office hours, then we wouldn't have things that affect the entire class in a positive way happening. I totally agree. You know, office hours are what can connect the students to the teacher. Because if not, these circles will move independently of each other, Mm -hmm. even though they're crossing 
they're not crossing paths. It's almost like two circles, like a Venn diagram that's like not a Venn diagram yet. So it's like you're buttoned up against each other. You've got the circle of the students and the learning atmosphere. You've got the professors and the faculty. And like you're looking at each other to share information, but there's no crossover. Then office hours are that third yes. circle where everything connects. Yes, it is. You, you're following me. <laughs> I am. <laughs> so it's, 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 that, it's that like nice middle ground because, you know, it's not – it's not in the setting of I have to teach you this content in this way, in this time block. It's, okay, you've had that time. You've sat with this. You know, I have also been doing work or planning lessons or whatnot, and now we're going to kind of have a touch base, mm-hmm. you know, where we're checking in and we're seeing how things are going. And, you know, I think that's where it's kind of important to have it open as an option instead of a requirement so that, you know, you kind of – can use it as a hey let's check in are things going well or things not going well and you know if, if there's something that's up then students should be going into office hours to talk about it yeah I mean that's what they're made for yeah <laughs> that that's genuinely why they have those office hours open um and I think some people not naming any names but Ryan um <laughs> might need to give them a shot <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us for this STLI podcast, All Students Considered. Engage with us wherever podcasts are sold. You've been watching the Steely Podcast, All Students Considered. Engage with us. For more information on the studio for teaching and learning, browse our website at steely.wm.edu for teaching resources, videos, and blogs on what we do. This episode was brought to you by the letters T and L which stand for teaching and learning.